Hi everyone, it's Alice and today it's time to wrap up the books I read in July. I know that this month technically still has some days left in it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to finish any more books, so we're just doing it today. I had a pretty good reading month. I read seven books in July, which is pretty good for me. And I am happy with it, but it was a little bit of a mixed bag, I'm not gonna lie. We're just gonna get into it starting with the first book that I finished, which was Raiders of the Lost Heart by Joe Segura. And this is a contemporary romance adventure type book, and it's about these two rival archaeologists who have to team up to go on this Aztec expedition together. And that's kind of it. It's about them on this expedition and them really really wanting to sleep together. I knew when I picked this up that this might be a little bit like ridiculous and a little bit silly and I'm not a huge romance reader but I thought that the romance with like the archaeology stuff and the expedition I thought that mixed together might just be fun to read and in a way it was but it's also just it's just not that good. <laughs> now we've got these two characters that we're following in here and both of them felt quite stereotypical to me, but it is obvious that the book is trying to give them dimension, but I didn't really think it worked that well. Like they don't really feel like real people. They feel like the characters that you've met in most like adventure movies in a way. They just feel very stereotypical. And to be honest, sometimes that can be a little bit fun. And this was fun for a while. It's like, the book really is about these two people who really, really want each other. And that is like the main focus on the book, which I think can be fun. It's not necessarily an issue that that is a big part of the story, but I felt like it overshadowed everything else. And I think if you go into the book just wanting that part of the story, you're gonna get it and you might enjoy it more than me. But I also wanted some of this other stuff. I wanted like the archaeology stuff and like the adventure part of it. And it is in here, but it feels very much like a side thing and it doesn't feel very like thought out. Like it's very clear that that is not the main part of the story. And the thing is, when you're setting up a story which is about these two people who just really want to get together, like that's the main buildup of the story and then they get together and it doesn't happen at like the end of the book it happens in the middle when we got to that part i was just like okay and i lost all interest because there is nothing else really intriguing about the story like that's it i don't really have that much more to say about this to be honest it is maybe worth pointing out that i usually don't love these kinds of books so the problem may be with the audience and not with the book but I just I don't know I wasn't expecting a literary masterpiece but I was expecting a little bit more than this it was like fun and easy in a way but I also just got really bored very quickly so the thirst was real but it's not enough two out of five stars secondly I read an ebook it was cultish the language of fanaticism by Amanda Montel and this is a nonfiction book that focuses on the language that is used in cults both in more like traditional cults but also how it's used in like lesser ways in our society this is a book that I picked up on a whim because I recently got an e-reader and I just found it on there and I was like that sounds interesting. So I read it and it was really interesting. I find cults to be fascinating like a lot of people do and I really like learning about it and like learning about how everything works. And this was a really interesting look at it like through the lens of language. I've never thought about it, but it was really interesting. What the author basically does in this is that she takes us through all of these different cults going from the most fanatical to the sort of lesser dangerous ones in a way that might not be considered cults and she explores how language is used to indoctrinate people and there's a lot of talk about like brainwashing and mind control which are interesting terms and she discusses that quite a lot but it's all about how language 
bring people in and keep them in these kinds of situations. Throughout this, we look at all kinds of different things that I'd never considered sort of cult-like, like MLMs and how sort of cultish language is used in business and stuff like that. And I thought that was fascinating. I'd never thought of it, but there were parts that I really like, I nodded my head at, especially the parts that had to do with like corporate language. <laughs> Like it was so interesting and there was so much that I recognized from my day job, which is a corporate job. And like some of the things that we do where I work that like fits into this, which is very, very interesting. I just think it's fascinating to learn about how people get into these things and the different levels of it. And I just think it's good to be aware. Like I did learn a lot from this book and I've thought a lot about it since I finished. Like, I've been at work <laughs> and I've been like, hmm, this does feel a little bit like that. And it was just, it was interesting. It was also very easy to read. It's very, like, accessible, I would say. And it's a mix of, like, linguistics and psychology, sociology, and we hear from different experts and we get first-hand accounts from people who have been in different kinds of cults. And it was just... Yeah, I've used the word interesting a lot already, but it really was very interesting. <laughs> Overall, I feel like I learned a lot and it was like food for thought and it was pretty fast paced for this kind of book, which I really like. Sometimes these kinds of books can be just a little bit too like technical, but I feel like this was very informative without being difficult to read. So I really enjoyed that. I would give this a four out of five stars. I would recommend it if you find these things interesting. I thought it was an interesting take on cults and I did find out that this author has a podcast also about cults that I definitely want to listen to because I'd like to hear more about like her thoughts on these kinds of things. Then after that I picked up My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg and this is like a fiction novel about this woman whose parents are dead and she lives in New York and she has this horrible on and off again boyfriend and she has this best friend who's kind of like her friend but also kind of not and she's just unhappy so she decides that she's gonna hibernate sleep for a year and she kind of thinks that this is gonna fix everything but also kind of not. <laughs> so this was an interesting read. I have heard a lot of people talk about this book, I've seen loads of reviews and I sort of got the sense that most people either love it or hate it and so I was expecting to feel that way but I actually don't. There were parts of this that I liked and parts that I didn't like and to me this feels very much like somewhere in the middle. In a lot of ways, this is what I expected this book to be, which is about a privileged woman who is like, honestly, just really depressed and she just wants to escape and she wants to sleep. And the way that she does this in the book is that she tries to like take all of these drugs and different mixes of different drugs. And that's how she can be sort of gone for extended periods of time. And I thought that was interesting and I thought it was interesting how she reacted to some of the drugs and like some of the consequences of doing that. There are some really disturbing moments in here. Some parts are even a little bit grotesque in a way. And it was interesting to get to know the main character and see like more and more of her past and her life and her memories being revealed throughout the story. I felt like it was weaved into the story really well, which I liked. There are also some interesting side characters in here and it was interesting to see her relationships with these different people. And she's also kind of unlikable, but you also empathize with her with certain things. So she is like, she's a multifaceted character. I do like the writing in here, even though I feel like maybe it drags a little bit sometimes, but I also feel like it makes sense with the story that we have. And it is a character driven book. It's like, it is mostly just about the main character. And it's the kind of book where stuff does happen, but it also feel like there's no plot. Like it, nothing happens in it in a way, which again makes sense. Like it has a pointlessness to it and like a hopelessness to it that does 
fit the story really well. It can be a little bit exhausting to read, I think, but it does make sense that that's how it's set up. All of that being said though, I just thought this would be a more memorable read and I thought that it would have more of an impact on me. I thought it would make me think more, but instead it's just the kind of book where like when I read it, I wasn't bored or anything. I liked it, but I never felt like super engaged in it. And I never like, I wasn't dying to get back to it. I just kept reading it because I like it. And I don't know, I just thought that it would make more of an impression on me and it kind of didn't. It just feels like the kind of book that now I've read it, I liked it. There was nothing wrong with it really, but I also, it didn't blow me away. And I don't know if I was expecting it to blow me away. I just thought it would make me think more. I don't really know. I liked it. It's fine. I gave it a three out of five stars. Read it, enjoyed it. We'll probably not think a lot about this book going forward. <laughs> After that, I read another ebook. It was Apocalypse Child by Floor Edwards. This is a memoir and it's about the author who spent the first 13 years of her life in the Children of God, which was a sort of nomadic cult that believed that the world was gonna end in 1993. I actually decided to pick this up because it was mentioned in the book Cultish and I was like, I've never heard of that book. Sounds interesting. It's also only around like 200 pages, so it was a fairly quick read and I just read it on a whim. Really. I think it's always interesting to read about people who have grown up so differently from yourself. Like, I feel like there's a lot to learn from that. And I feel like we got a peek behind the curtain in this, which I really liked. We follow the author and her family for several years and we get to learn about the sort of system of this group and what they believed and the things that they did because of that belief and how they sort of organized themselves, which was interesting. It was also kind of different with this because usually for a lot of people who leave cults it's very dramatic but in this one the leader of the cult dies and then it's sort of just they sort of just fade out of it and it's really not that dramatic which i thought was a little different and very interesting now although all of this is interesting it doesn't quite like it didn't quite hit a level that maybe I wanted it to and I didn't feel very connected to it because the way that the story is told feels very narrow and what I mean by that is that the story is very much like matter of fact like this is what happened to me this is what it was like and there isn't a lot of reflection around it from the now adult which I really missed and I think I probably prefer these kinds of books when they're a little broader in the way that they look at things. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just personal preference, but I just missed getting to know the now adult and seeing how everything that happened has shaped her. Like, there is very, very little of that. Those are kind of all of my thoughts though, I don't really have that much more to say about it. It was worth the read, like it was interesting and I learned some things, so that's cool, but I think I just probably prefer a little bit more of like adult reflection in these kinds of books. I don't really know but yeah it was worth the read it's like a three out of five star read like a lot of my reads then i was in the mood for something a little bit like summary so i picked up the cove by lj ross this is a mystery novel and it's about this woman who has the perfect life she has an amazing fiance and this amazing job in publishing but then she's attacked by a serial killer and this changes everything for her and eventually she decides to just move and she goes to Cornwall to run this tiny bookshop and when she gets there she witnesses something horrible or did she imagine it because she's struggling with her mental health? We don't know. All right, so this is very much what I thought it was going to be. It was on the lighter side, very summery. It even has some cozy vibes and I found it really, really enjoyable. I also really enjoyed reading this edition because even though it looks like kind of a chunky book, the font is huge. So I felt like I just flew through this. We've got a cast of characters in here, but we're mainly following the main character, obviously, who's going from this busy life in London to this tight-knit community 
that she finds by this bookshop and like they really take her in and it has this sort of like found family vibes which i really enjoyed the setting is also really good it is set by the coast and like by the sea and there is like a little town but the characters that we're mainly following like the bookshop is on this little location that when like the tide comes in you can't get in or out really and so the setting is like super atmospheric and like all of the weather and everything like it's very very just pure atmosphere it is however not perfect and i think that the weakest parts of this book like it's the mystery or the mysteries because we do have more than one in here and it's the pacing the pacing felt really off to me and i think in mystery novels like part of the enjoyment of it is like the build-up of suspense and i felt like that was like kind of weird and i don't know it just kind of felt like a side thing in the story but then obviously when we get towards the end that is the main part of the end and i don't know i think it was a little bit off and i also don't think that the reveal was like or reveals were that twisty I just sort of got to the end of that and I found out what was happening and I was just like, oh, okay. Overall though, it was very enjoyable and it has some like cozy summery vibes, which I did really like. And it's somewhere between like a three and four star read for me. I also found out that this is sort of like a part of a series called the Summer Suspense series, but I think that all of the books, like they don't follow the same characters or anything. I just think that they're sort of the same kinds of books where, you know, you have a mystery and it's like summery and light and a little cozy. I looked into the books and they look pretty good, so I might be getting more of them. But yeah, this was like overall very enjoyable. Second to last, I read another nonfiction book. I read a lot of nonfiction this month, actually, which I'm very happy with. But the next book that I read was Factfulness by Hans Rosling. And this is... It's basically all about how we humans think and how because of the way that we're sort of wired to think, we're often wrong about a lot of things. And it explores sort of the pitfalls of how humans think naturally and how we sort of veer towards being very negative and how because of the way that we think, we often perceive the world to be worse than it is and very often it may not be great, but it is better than we think. I'm really happy that I finally got around to reading this. It's a book I've been recommended a lot and I've heard a lot of good things about. And now that I've read it, I understand why so many people have so many good things to say. This is a book that has a lot of data in it. It's very informative, but I really liked how all of that was presented. It was surprisingly easy to read and very easy to understand, or at least I thought so. And it was just interesting to learn more about how people think and why we think the way we think and the sort of pitfalls of it. I did recognize quite a lot of it like when I was reading it. Now speaking of recognizing things, there is a lot of stuff in here that I had never thought about and that like sort of lent a new perspective. There were loads of things that I just didn't know, but and I, I don't mean to sound like <laughs> I knew all of this, but there was a lot of stuff that I already knew. And I think I expected, like I expected to have my mind blown because of like how people have spoken about this book. Like I really thought that it would be even more impactful. And I think it's in part because of the hype, but I also think that I don't know, I think if I had read this when it came out in like 2017 or 2018, it would have blown my mind even more. But now, I don't know. Like there were so many interesting things in here and I learned a lot, but I thought that I would be like absolutely blown away and I'm kind of not. I just think I was aware of a lot of these concepts already and I do think that they are mind blowing the first time that you come across them but this wasn't the first time that I did so it maybe didn't feel as like huge I guess. I would still say that it's definitely worth a read though. I think it's good for anyone to have sort of your thinking challenged in this way and I think that everyone should be aware of a lot of the concepts in here. I think it's 
sort of good to have in the back of your mind. Now I did read some reviews of this after I finished it where I saw that several people mentioned that they found the tone really condescending. I didn't really feel that when I was reading this. I just felt like the author got very excited in certain parts and maybe got like a little bit carried away but I I didn't really mind. It was just like he's very excited and he just wants to sort of inspire and I do think that this is quite an inspiring book and yeah glad I read it would definitely recommend it and it's a very solid four out of five star read. Lastly I read another mystery novel it was Exiles by Jane Harper and this is the third and I'm pretty sure final book in the Aaron Falk series and in here we follow the mystery of this woman who disappears on this spring day at this festival and she leaves behind her baby in a pram and then we sort of get back to these characters a year on as they've never found this woman they have no idea what happened and they gather again to sort of appeal to the public now i really liked the two other books in the series which is obviously why i picked this up and i really like jane harper as a mystery writer and i mention this every time i mention her but like she's so good at creating atmosphere especially in her settings and i just really really enjoy that unfortunately I would probably say that out of the series this is my least favorite like it didn't quite live up to what i was expecting but i did enjoy it the setup of the story is really good we have an intriguing mystery we have an amazing setting which adds a lot of atmosphere and we have a really interesting cast of characters and one of the things that i really like about jane harper's books is like the relationships between all of the characters and sort of exploring that like she always does that really well i struggled a little bit with the pacing of this though which threw me off a little bit usually jane harper's mysteries are kind of like slow burns and they almost feel like character driven which is why i like them so much but in this one i just felt like the pacing didn't quite work i feel like the first part was really good where we get the setup and then the middle drags so much and I don't really know what it was like I can't really pinpoint it but it just didn't quite work for me and it lost me a little bit so when we got to the end and we got to the reveals which actually were pretty good I just wasn't that invested and I was just like meh about it and I don't know I just didn't get that like sucked in feeling that I usually get when I read her books. I do still love the atmosphere and the setting and I do think that this was a good end to the series but yeah it didn't quite like do it for me. I am excited to see what Jane Harper writes next and I'm always interested to read her books. This is just didn't quite work for me. It felt very much like a 3 out of 5 star read so that's what I'm gonna give it and I think the other two books like I prefer them quite a lot more than this like the other two books are really really good <laughs> okay that was the last book though which means that we have reached the end now I'd love to hear all about what you all have been reading lately tell me all about it in the comments I'm always interested to hear about it and as always thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon bye